Ladies, gentlemen, family and friends, it is with great honour that I'm starting the speeches tonight as the better half of Connor's best men. For those of you who we are yet to meet, I am James, and as way of introduction, this is Kyle. We equally thank you all for being here today as those people most dear to both Connor and B. It is a shared honour being the best men, but it has also been a colossal pain in the arse, to say the least. We are in about four or five WhatsApp group chats, which I personally can't wait to leave permanently <laughs> after today. As much as we love Connor, I don't think either myself, Kyle, or Groomsman will be asking him to organize anything on our behalf ever again. <laughs> the success of today we know is down to you, B, and what a beautiful day it's been so far. As collective groomsmen, we have particularly enjoyed the many trousers and shirts that we've all tried on until we have found something that's fit my ass, Kyle's Jack Grealish calves, Reese's skinny legs, Nathan's thighs, <laughs> Ethan's thighs, sorry. <laughs> and doesn't highlight how much fitter Metzen is than all of us. Connor has always had a cool and unique style. I'm, <laughs> and Lorraine. <laughs> I'm just not sure it's translated to me today. I must admit, I do feel like a Tory MP who's just got into indie rock. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle and I, along with others here today, have known Connor since we were 13. From when he had his Jackson 5 afro, to more recently when he said, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Seth Rogen. <laughs> That look definitely lasted more than a night and longer than it should have. Isn't that right, Lee? <laughs> School with Connor involved having as much of a laugh as possible, not taking life too seriously, and going to parks, fields, and house parties to get as pissed up as we could, as often as we could, without getting caught. I, for one, could never understand how this hairy chimp was the one always texting all the girls, <laughs> even the fit girls in the year above. Although, B, I can promise you, he never sealed the deal. <laughs> when we were legal, legally allowed to go out, we equally shared in the pain of him never getting in as his eyes would close up and go bloodshot after the whiff of a pint. I, along with others, have enjoyed on many occasions watching Connor jump over barriers to try to get into clubs. For, hi for him, and I mean within minutes, be carried back out by the bouncers. This being something we would watch on repeat until his little legs gave up or the venue closed. <laughs> Not much has changed now we're 30, and we still manage to lose each other in the same room. I, I guess that one's here to stay, mate. <laughs> Although, on a positive, Gary now lets us have a drink with him when we watch the rugby. Whereas growing up, we were given two pints of carling and told, fuck off gay boys, and had to sit somewhere else. <laughs> Thanks. Life got more serious, picking where we were all going off to university. The whisper at the time around Wooten Bassett was that Connor was off to study at Oxford University which was certainly news to all of us. <laughs> that was until we found out he was going to study travel and tourism, which is yet to appear on their syllabus. <laughs> Connor ended up choosing Plymouth over Oxford Brooks, and I think it's one of the best decisions he's made. It was always such a laugh visiting Connor, Reese, a clear masochist, for voluntarily opting to live with Connor for three years, Lloyd, Sam, and others in Plymouth, as they all worked in the bars we'd go to. This being the only surety that we knew Connor would not get kicked out or banned. <laughs> Although, on one occasion, he was banned and barred from Plymouth City Centre, <laughs> which is a story for another time. <laughs> Connor's love of bars, I think, started from his nights performing in the Copper Bar in Thailand, <laughs> after Glenn, his uncle, had stitched him up on numerous occasions to get up and perform. <laughs> this love of having a laugh and working with mates ultimately led Connor to UB when he started working at Total Bay in Oxford. B was in fact Connor's boss and a dynamic I'm sure he still enjoys today. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I still remember the phone call I had with him about this fit girl he's working with who's into great music and laughs at all of his stupid jokes. <laughs> By all accounts, Connor then proceeded to stalk B and followed her to Chippenham after opting for a transfer. The start of any great love story or crime thriller. <laughs> B, Perry, Danny, a lucky roll of the dice there. I think we all knew how in love he was as we started to hear from him less and less. I, for one, until the stag didn't know he lived in Chippenham. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Connor, you are a brother and a brother to all of, us, all of us lads, as we can't help but love and fucking hate you. <laughs> From watching Pat hold hands with a one-toothed gypsy at a festival <laughs> to watching an obese woman fall out of a pub in Cardiff and smash two plastic pitchers to more recently finding out that Gary has been calling Kyle Carl for near on 15 years. <laughs> We will always be little boys laughing at ours and others' embarrassment or misfortune. <laughs> I am no expert on marriage or love, B, but I do know Connor. All the girlfriends and wives of the men here today know we are all just a bit useless, but we don't mean to be. B, it's worth knowing that we often show our love in acts of service and quality time. I know that as I skim read an article that Liz sent me on love languages, <laughs> proof that we do try. B, Connor adores you and would do anything for you. He worships his family, especially you, Pierre. You're his favourite, don't tell anyone. <laughs> is a friend that's always there for you and faces life's challenges head on and with humour. I know that all of these strengths and traits he has, he is promising to you today and your life together. He may be the fifth best go-karter I know. <laughs> 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 Not the impact winger on a rugby pitch he professes he was, or the tightest of humans, but he is one of the kindest and most caring men I know, and he truly worships the ground you, you walk on. Before we raise a toast and I end the best man's speech, I'd just like to thank Gary for all the drinks we'll be putting on his tab later tonight. <laughs> I guess some things never change, Gary. In celebration of Connor and B, can we all be upstanding and raise a toast to these two beautiful people? To Mr. and Mrs. Campbell. Cheers. So before I start, um, all I can tell you, D Danny said to me, my wife, Danny, she said to me, she said, you talk at work all the time in front of thousands of people, but I can tell you right now, this is a lot harder. <laughs> so, um, I think she's now worried about what I'm going to say, actually. I can, I can tell by the look on her face. So, first of all, thank you all for coming today. Um, it's great to see so many of you and so many different families and all coming together. Um, I'd also like to thank my wife, Danny. Um, now, she doesn't know what I've written here because I've refused to show her, but... Um, she's dedicated her life to bringing up the... Okay, come on. All right. <laughs> Shame. Um, thank you for bringing up the children um, without me most of the time. And, oh, by the way, thanks for bringing up the horse as well. I mean, that was... Uh, <laughs> that was um, but I spent most of my time as a, a business adventurer running around the world. I spent 10 years living in India and, and uh, Danny had to really bring up the children without me. I think most of the time she was a mother, she was a father and a party organiser and a taxi service. So well done Danny for that. Um, Bianca actually calls her Madre or simply Mama. And, and uh, <laughs> see, I know. <laughs> um, and it's that love and affection that Danny's shown to be that she also has herself. She has fantastic genes, um, which makes her a very lovable, kind, and um, generous young lady. Um, however, she's also got my sense of adventure and a little bit of craziness, um, and that's what makes her more unique, but I guess a little bit more on that later. Oh, by the way, sorry, I'm using paper. I'm not as sophisticated as James. I haven't quite got into the electronic technology yet. Um, and I want to thank uh, Natalie and Gary for, for bringing up really an amazing son who's really turned out to be um, the perfect partner, husband, and soulmate for B. Thank you, Gary and Natalie. So, 
on to B. <laughs> Sorry, I need a drink. <laughs> um, Ah, well, I can say B. Born on the 26th of September. <laughs> By the way, for the, oh, the whole life, I've always forgotten that date, so I had to write it down. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, she fell, when Bianca was born, she fell immediately into the spot of being a middle child. But of course, when she was born, she wasn't born as a middle child. Um, Ethan had to come along seven or eight years later. Um, she, so when we were younger, she used to call herself the fifth child. Now, bear with us. There's five in the family, and we are very cruel parents. We always used to make her sit on the edge of the table. So she was, used to call herself the fifth child. But anyway, she, we're very cruel parents. Anyway, she's, she's lived by that middle child title for her whole life. Um, but she's lovable, she's kind, she's passionate, and she has this edge for excitement um, and innocent troubles. But, I mean, when she was young, Danny and I... Um, went to a, a parent-teacher's uh, meeting, and I don't know how she was, Dan, about six or seven or something, and they said she's either going to be a lawyer or a pole dancer. I think that probably sums up me. <laughs> Both. Um, anyway, there's one event that sticks in our minds, and um, she knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> she knows this one. B was about 14 or 15, so she was quite young, and um, those were the days of the old BlackBerry. I don't know if you remember those days. And, and unfortunately, BBM, BlackBerry Messenger, gave away B's party antics. And um, so one morning, uh, Danny gets a phone from Rachel's mum, one of her best friends at that, that time, to say she'd been partying that night before. But it wasn't just a usual party. At 14 years old, she'd, we were living in Spain. We were living in the middle of the countryside. She climbed out of her window... She called a taxi, she got in the taxi, she went 30 minutes down to the coast, Porto Benus, spent all night partying on the beach with her friends, got a taxi and came back again, climbed through the window. <laughs> we didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> so yeah, Bianca, Poppy and Rebecca, I think, were the Sunland party animals and, and I think that's, that really describes Bianca very well. Um, but like I said, with all those adventures, she's also very kind and caring. Another incident, which I, again sticks very close to my chest, is well, I said I was working in India for 10 years, and uh, we sponsored a blind school, and the blind school had 100 um, blind kids. <laughs> she, she knows this one too. <laughs> that, you're making me... <laughs> <laughs> all right, another drink. <laughs> Cheers to my friends. Um, so B, um, she, she went there to work experience and... Um, <laughs> I'm not looking at you. Um, so she went to, to translate English books into Braille so that these young kids could learn to, to study. And uh, in India, a lot of these kids were you know, put on the street because they couldn't work. And so there were kids of all ages. And this charity, this blind school, basically gave them GCSE-type education and they could go out into the world and, and, um, and make a living. And, um, yeah, B went there to type Braille, but I think it was like a, a week into it. They fell in love with you, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and she was telling me how... We cried so much over this. <laughs> And, um, yeah, they fell in love with her, and she, it, was, it was a really rich experience. So, you see, she's nuts and she's lovable. Um, so, I think, you know, B over the years, has achieved so much, and sometimes she lacks that little bit of confidence, but she's achieved so much, and, and you know, she's, she got her master's in marketing, and she went off and was successful in a beta B to C world, and then she went off and got a little white van. I don't know if you've seen B's got a little white van, and <laughs> and she's flipping furniture, and I think she did some roofing with Aaron, and yeah, so B's a, an entrepreneur as well as a, a little bit crazy, I would say. <laughs> um, anyway, she met Connor, and the same story that James 
gave. And, you know, as we know B, she's a little bit edgy, um, but she came back from Oxford, from the Turtle Bay training, and life was very different. This, this nutcase became almost, I don't know if you remember, very calm. I've met this guy. And he makes great cocktails. <laughs> so, well done, Con. Uh, and, uh, and, and I wrote the same words down, James. Um, they were as thick as thieves. So, Connor, you know, is adventurous, loves a pint or two. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, he's fun-loving, he's adventurous, and, he, and but he's calm and he's patient. And I think the great thing between the two of them is that really balances each other out. There, I, I wrote down initially yin and yang, but they're not. They're actually in line with each other. They have the same path together. But yeah. Connor calms B down. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, Ty, Connor also makes great Thai curry. So I don't know who, whose fault that is, but um, we've certainly appreciated it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> A great, great Thai curry, Con. Um, <laughs> um, so I know Natalie and Gary are so proud of Connor. It's lovely to see the, the love and affection you give to Con. And, you know, we were lucky to spend some time together in Spain. By the way, I still owe you for that meal. Um, <laughs> and apparently I owe you for the beers later at the bar. So thanks for that, James. Uh, um, but what I love about Natty and Gary is they share the same family values and the same love and the passion that Danny and I have as well. And I think that's a great beginning to a fantastic relationship that hopefully you guys will carry on through your genes <laughs> for many years to come. Um, but anyway, B, I have no, you know that side of the brain that's creative? I don't really have that side in my brain. But I also knew that B loved poetry, and so I thought I would try my best at writing her a poem. No, no, it's really not that good. <laughs> I'm, sorry. It's, I'm sorry, it's not that good. But anyway, so we have a beautiful daughter called Bianca. She's energetic, fun, adorable, and we love her. She met her match, her soulmate and partner, Connor, we forgive his music taste because he loves her. As two pieces of a puzzle, they fit together and we are sure they're going to stay in love forever. <laughs> B. I'm not sure when you dyed my hair from grey to black. And you got it all over my face, you did it on purpose. <laughs> or Connor, I'm not sure you still want that dowry. <laughs> That's a private joke, sorry about that. But anyway, we're very proud of you both and so glad that you're here married together. I know it will last forever. So everybody, please join me in a toast for this fabulous, edgy and lovable <laughs> bride and groom. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Perry, thank you, and James, thank you, because them speeches were unbelievable, and I don't know how I'm going to follow you, to be honest with you. Um, I'd just like to say a few words today. They're not, I, I mean, I wrote quite a bit, but Perry, I mean, Jesus, and you, James, as well. Fantastic. But I'll say a few words because I'm probably going to spend the next 40 years listening. So <laughs> I'll take my opportunity now. Um, when I asked Perry for B's hand in marriage, um, it was quite a nerve-wracking moment for her. I never thought I'd do that. I don't seem very traditional. Um, but as soon as I did, Perry laughed and told me, no problem, no refunds. <laughs> uh, so that settled my nerves quite quickly, to be fair, Perry. Um, I want to thank everyone here. Uh, all of you in one way or another has touched my life personally uh, and you've influenced my personality. And the personality I've got is one that Bianca loves, which is a result. 
to be honest. Um, so I want to thank all of you for being in my life. Without you, I wouldn't be the lucky man I am today and wouldn't be able to have this bloody, bloody wonderful day. Um, without all of you here today, our day wouldn't be nearly as special, although it would have been a little bit cheaper. <laughs> <coughs> uh, our parents, thank you for being so supportive, caring, and always there to pick us up when we fall down. Dad, I'm sure it's killing you not having a speech, but you've interjected to everyone, so you've, you've done your best. Uh, but I like to think of your sense of humour anyway, so there's a bit of you in this speech, and thankfully I got that, and not your fucking hairline. <laughs> 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 well done. Yeah, nice one, Dad. Sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mum, I've got your care inside, so any part of this speech with any emotion, we'll put down to you. Stop stepping over my speech. You've chatted enough. Uh, Mum, I've got your care inside, so any part of this speech with any emotion, we'll put down to you. Mum, Dad, Bianca specifically asked me in this bit to thank you in the speech for producing such a handsome stud of a son, actually, so that bit, that bit comes from my wife. Uh, Danny, you've given B compassion and empathy, and that's kept me in her good books. Perry, you've made sure B doesn't put up with any shit, which has probably put me in her bad books. Uh, Perry, Danny, you've welcomed me into the family with such kindness and generosity, and I really appreciate being part of your family for the rest of my life. I'm just sorry you got the rough end of the deal. <laughs> uh, groomsmen, you're all my best friends, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you by my side on my wedding day. I'm gutted I didn't make you wear the bow ties to make you look like proper gimps, but <laughs> you can thank me for that. Also, you look like the waiters, so. <laughs> or, or like a hired magicians for the day. <laughs> uh, special mention to my new brother-in-law, Ethan. You're the football nerd, game-obsessed brother I always wanted growing up. My sister Sophie was a fantastic sibling, but the only video game she would play with me was Britney Spears' Dance Beat. <laughs> and now I know Britney's back catalogue word for word. <laughs> if the DJ was here, I'd do it, but he's not what I meant to do. Uh, James Carl, it's strange to be writing this speech before I've heard the best man speech, so it's either a thank you very much or fuck you very much. But actually, James, you did a fucking excellent job, mate, so thank you, I appreciate it. Kyle, I know you dealt with most of the stag, so again, thank you. I know you didn't enjoy it, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, either way, you've both shown up for me in different ways over the years and during this wedding, and I appreciate and love you both. Uh, can we have a quick raise of glass to these pair of bellends, please? Uh, Gracie, Georgina, it goes without saying that both of you look beautiful today. Be so lucky to have a pair of friends that support and build her up in ways that best friends should. We're incredibly lucky to have you in our lives, and I can't wait to keep building memories with you both. Again, please raise your glasses for the bridesmaids. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <coughs> uh, I was very fortunate to meet B, or I'm sure she'd say actually she was very fortunate to meet me. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, good. Um, I'd put in for a transfer from Turtle Bay Oxford the day before Bianca joined, so uh, I was going to be on the move to Liverpool. Um, but B joined, and I got off for Cheltenham, which was perfect. <laughs> I would have said it's love at first sight, but uh, when I found out that we had a female trainee coming in, I Facebook stalked her all week. So I saw her well before she walked through the door. Uh, like I said, by luck, they offered me the Cheltenham restaurant that B was training for. I, I'd only known her three days when I'd agreed. Um, I've told her it was because at least I knew someone there when I moved there, but in reality, it's because she was cool, liked to drink, and somehow found me funny. Um, following her to Cheltenham like a creep was probably the best decision I've ever made. Mm -hmm. B and I always talk about how lucky we were that things worked out the way that they have. Uh, I'm not usually the type to wax lyrical and talk much about my emotions, which is much to the disappointment of Bianca, to be fair. <laughs> uh, but I suppose today is as good a day as any. <clears throat> Especially seeing as though B has just agreed to a lifetime of putting up with me, it's the least I could do, I think. <laughs> Uh, firstly, she's a great tragic character, obviously. <laughs> uh, frankly, before I met Bianca, I was a bit of a mess. Um, I was a high-functioning binge drinker. I <laughs> uh, had a rubbish job. I was an emotionally stunted man-child, if you will. Uh, in fact, after our first date, I had the perfect chance to give her a kiss before she got on a train. Uh, but I bottled it. Um, because I'm a gentleman. 
<laughs> no, I'm just a massive pussy, actually. Um, she's changed my life only for the better, and her focus has always been on working on our lives to make us happier, more successful people. No matter how difficult I've made it, she's always seen the best in me and always sees the best in people around her. Her drive is second to none, and any positive moves we've made as a couple have come from her. Her patience could do with a bit of work. I agree. But even so, she tolerates my questionable music choices, my constant shite puns, my terrible habits, and my premature dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my absolute hook line. That was the best one I've written, guys. That was the best one. Uh, it's, not <laughs> it's not just be putting up with me, though. She goes to bed every night with a torn up piece of her mum's old 90 that must be about 20 years oh, old. Sorry, was, <laughs> was a little bit, yeah. I figure if I can put... <laughs> you hang me out of this. I figure if I can put up with that, I'm definitely marriage material. <laughs> that balance is why we work, work so well. I'm relaxed, she's incredibly driven. I'm a great cook, she's not. <laughs> I pay attention to movies, she needs them explaining. I'm a lazy sod, she loves cleaning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's a joke. It's a joke, Mum. Um, some some days I wake up grumpy, and sometimes I just let her sleep. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're two halves of the same puzzle. My soulmate. She's the most really resilient, perfect woman I've ever met, and it's my absolute privilege to be married to her for the rest of my life. So, can you please all raise a glass to my beautiful bride, Bianca Campbell? Yeah. Cheers, guys. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Oh. All right, that's it for speech, isn't it? <laughs>